Our DNA, the genetic blueprint that makes each of us who we are, also unites us with all of life. Scientist Paul Nurse knew that humans shared fundamental genetic instructions with other living creatures. To test if these instructions could be understood and acted upon by other organisms, Nurse chose common baker's yeast and designed an experiment to see if it could decode and follow the instructions in human DNA. Yeast is single-celled, but like human cells, it needs to grow and divide in order to survive. What you can see here are growing normal yeast cells. Several days ago, we spread these yeast cells on this plate, and they since then, each single cell has divided many, many times until it forms this visible colony, as we call them, on this plate. And I'll uh, just put this here, because we need a much higher magnification. So if I look down here and move the, the uh, Petri dish around until I can see something growing, these individual cells are like short sausages. They continue to grow, and then when they reach a certain size, they divide from one cell into two. But we can get mutants which uh, don't behave this way. I've got some on this plate over here, and they're growing much less well. And if we look now under the microscope with these, then they look rather different. I'll just try and find some for you. They're right, like very, very long, uh, elongated sausages here because they cannot divide. Nurse used a simple method. He gave the mutant yeast cells human DNA taken from a library of human genes and watched to see if they could repair themselves. So now we just have the pellet of yeast at the bottom and I want to resuspend it in this liquid here. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of this gene library out of this test tube and then add it to the yeast cells, whirly mix it to mix it all up together again. And in there, we've got these millions and millions of yeast cells surrounded by these human genes. And each cell is going to take up one or two of these genes. We have to sterilize this glass rod here and then spread it all over this jelly dish here. If there is a human gene in this library that can perform the same job as the gene that is defective in this mutant strain, then this mutant strain which takes up that human gene will now be able to grow and divide. The last common ancestor shared by yeast and humans lived many millions of years ago. Since then, they have taken quite separate evolutionary paths. Would the yeast in this experiment still recognize the human instructions well enough to follow them? The yeast cells have now had access to the human genes for 72 hours. I can see that those cells that have got the human gene are dividing quite normally but those cells which have lost it have become highly elongated and stopped division. So this has really worked. This gene now is actually really allowing these defective cells to grow and divide. I think it's rather touching that we should share genes with a worm. I mean, we, in these days when we think of the environment and we think of other living things, the fact that we share a gene pool with all living organisms, including the worm, including the lowly yeast, doesn't that mean that we should have a greater respect for all living organisms? I don't feel, in fact, all, any the less for that. I feel ennobled that we, we share this gene pool, and it makes us respect all living things, all living organisms.